So we know from topic A5 that our homes are mainly powered by electricity as well as gas, oil and coal. But how do we produce electricity? The answer lies beneath the ground in fossil fuels. Oil, coal and gas are extracted from under the sea and under the ground and are burnt to produce energy which powers electric generators. Inside one of these generators, the burning of the oil, coal and gas boils water which produces the steam to drive a turbine. It is the motion of the turbine which generates electricity. Oil, coal and gas are examples of non-renewable energy sources because we have a limited supply of them. However, a lot of people still use these fossil fuels and they are a problem for our environment. A byproduct of when they are burnt is carbon dioxide. Now carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas and is believed to contribute to an increased rate of global warming, which many people believe will have a negative effect on our planet in the future. This is a very serious situation, but carbon capture and storage CCS, helps reduce the emissions by capturing carbon and storing it in old oil and gas fields. Another negative effect is that burning fossil fuels produces sulphur dioxide. This chemical rises into the atmosphere and reacts with the rain clouds, which produces acid rain when they fall. Acid rain can seriously affect ecosystems by changing the pH of ponds and rivers. However, these sulphur impurities can be removed before burning. Besides the negative effects, the main issue with non-renewable energy sources is that they will run out. And then what? Now with that cause, we move on to nuclear power. You should know from your chemistry lessons that every atom is a positively charged nucleus with surrounding negatively charged electrons. In nuclear power stations, the nuclei used is uranium or plutonium. Uranium is mainly used because its nucleus is very unstable and splits apart, giving out energy. Nuclear fuel uses energy in the core of a reactor to heat up a liquid called the coolant. The coolant flows out of the core by pipes to heat exchanger and then flows back into the reactor. The engine transferred by the coolant boils water which produces steam and turns a turbine, generating electricity. Nuclear energy produces 10,000 more times energy per kilogram than a fossil fuel. Another major advantage is that there are no greenhouse gases produced. However, nuclear energy produces radioactive waste which needs to be stored for many years. Fossil fuels do not produce this radioactive waste. For the next part of the video we will look at A7 Renewable Energy Sources. A renewable energy source is one which is replenished by the environment naturally. You will need to know in detail the main types of renewable energy. The first type we'll look at is biofuels. A biofuel is a gas taken from a living organism. For example, methane is produced by cows in the waste. Ethanol is another biofuel produced from fermented sugar cane. We can modify engines to run off biofuels instead of fossil fuels for transportation and in small power plants, and some vehicles even run off biodiesel. Biofuels are a great swap for fossil fuels because they are renewable, meaning it's from a biological source which can reproduce, and it's carbon neutral. Although it releases carbon dioxide when burned, the biological organism will take in the same amount of carbon dioxide while living, so technically there's no extra added carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. The next type of renewable energy we'll be studying is energy from water. Wave generators float under the sea level which bob up and down due to the current. The motion of the waves generate electricity by turning a generator. The cable delivers the electricity produced to the land. Issues with this method are the generators need to be strong enough to withstand storms and the cables from buildings along the coastlines are an eyesore. Tidal patterns may also be inconsistent. Tidal power differs from wave generators because the tidal power stations trap water behind a barrier. The barriers are released and as the water rushes back into the sea, they turn turbines which generate electricity. The electricity is taken to the national grid through underground cables. These barriers will upset natural habitats and the creatures living there, and again are an eyesore. Hydroelectric power produces electricity when rainwater, reservoirs and storage schemes let water they've collected run downhill, turning turbines and generating electricity. A lot of water is needed to produce sufficient energy. Often reservoirs can become dry as well. Now, we've all seen a wind turbine in our lives. They work by the wind turning the turbine which turns a generator producing electricity. The stronger the winds, the faster the blade turn, so the more energy is produced. Because of this, they can be no good when little or no winds in the air. They also ruin the natural landscape and have complaints about the noise. We use solar heating panels to heat water directly from the sun's energy or solar cells to generate electricity from the sun's energy. Solar cells are only useful when little electrical energy is needed, because they only convert 10% of the energy they absorb. Solar heating panels, however, can be used for domestic use on average summer day in Britain. 
They can provide hot water for the day by heating up a tank. You can also use solar heating panel towers which use mirrors to reflect the sunlight onto a water tank, producing steam which turns the turbine to generate electricity. A few thousand homes can be powered in a dry hot climate on a larger scale. However, all of the solar energy can only be obtained during the day and not a lot is obtained during winter seasons. Geothermal energy comes from beneath the Earth's surface from radioactive substances. This radioactive energy is released from transfer to surrounding rock and travels towards the Earth's surface. Volcanic areas are a good place to build a geothermal power station because this is where the heat is transferred from lava not too low under the ground. Water is pumped through the ground in pipes where it is heated up to become steam. The steam is directed to ground level and turns turbines to generate electricity. Some areas use geothermal energy directly for heating buildings, such like underfloor heating and in bathrooms and in kitchens. I will quickly go over the key points about renewable energy sources. The advantages are they will never run out because they replenish naturally. There are also no nasty byproducts such as greenhouse gases, acid rain, and radioactive waste. However, there are problems with these renewable energy sources. These are some sources are not available all the time, and renewable energy sources do not generate enough energy for our demand, which fossil fuels do.